Cousins or Samuelson back on for Saturday's game? Uh, yes, yes, they're they're day to day, and uh, you mentioned last time we spoke. I did not have an update on Samuelson, but uh, each day, a uh, real positive direction. So he is progressing uh, very well. And Jeff has progressed to day to day now. Jeff uh, is going to jump into practice with us um, based on his uh, uh, rehab skate this morning. So positive news there as well. Cousins' injury happened last game. It did. It happened during the game, uh, third period. Colin, I know it's not an unusual circumstance, but what's your reaction as a coach to see a more veteran player like Dolly open his home to a younger player like Zach Benson, who, you know, was looking for a place to live? And, um, yeah. Yeah, and it's a new home for Dolls. He just moved He moved, moved in it uh, maybe three months ago, so... Uh, I know he was excited um, to have him. I, I, I talked to both of them uh, within the day or two that, separately, and both of them said the same thing to me. They said, yeah, I get to watch hockey with Dolls every night, and Dolls said the same thing with about Benson. So they're they're both rink rats. They love the game, um, and uh, they're, they'll be uh, they'll be good roommates. But yeah, it does say a lot that uh, Dolls thought of him, and uh, especially moving in a new place. And uh, it's pretty pretty neat. You know, to have that, uh, the guy want to do that. But we, we all know Dolls is a really good leader for us. You were a little older, but what was the transition like for, to pro hockey for you at a young age? Well, certainly wasn't as good as these guys, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but um, uh, the transition off the ice, yeah. it, it's a different, you know, we, I went from, from uh, playing at the University of Wisconsin for four years and then to pro, to, you know, minor league hockey pro, and it's a different lifestyle. I mean, a completely different lifestyle where you're uh, from the college scene where you're around a peer group of 40,000 students your own age and you, you get into a pro hockey and you go to practice and everybody disperses and goes home and you kind of sit at home. I, I, I always thought I studied more when I played pro hockey than I did in college because you were bored you know, most of the day. And it's true. I, I, I did. I studied more after college than I did in college. Don't tell anybody that. <laughs> did you have a billet in your first year in the ECHL? No. No, we were all in apartments. Don, with, uh, more, with more time yesterday, how did you how did you take advantage of the time to prepare for the unusual circumstances and having to, you know, 24 more hours to get ready for this game? Yeah, it was odd. It's a lot of shoveling. Um, but uh, you, you do – you do uh, take advantage of it. First of all, you, you get a little time to decompress um, and a little bit more time to catch up because you're always running behind. There's always more you want to do the way the schedule's set. Um, so you you got more time to plan the next meetings. I just met with a couple players now separately. Uh, and you just have more time to prepare for those and you can streamline those better. Um, so you feel like you can you can be a little bit more efficient because you, you're not so time constrained and that's a luxury that not many uh, that, 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 that the league does not afford uh, coaches or teams uh, much for that during the season. Jalen hasn't played in over a week. I think this is probably the longest time other than when he was hurt this year. I mean, we've seen how he prepares, but just how have you seen him use his time to his advantage, I guess? Well, as a young guy, I mean, he's, he's so engaged with film mm -hmm. with Mike Bales. He's engaged – uh, on the ice with Mike before practice, after practice, and the players before and after practice. So he's just a hungry rink rat guy. So, you know, whether he's playing or not, it doesn't change his routine or his day, which he attacks. He attacks the day wanting more, more information, more reps, um, more challenges. Uh, so, you know, yeah, he, he hasn't played in a bit. But he's certainly not going to be rusty uh, by any means, and he's probably going to be even better because he's he just he, like I said he attacks it. He wants guys to shoot pucks on him. He wants guys to challenge him. So um, it's probably a good good break for him. The challenge is having you have having the schedule get interrupted like this with you know you, you not being able to practice games, getting moved and yeah. whatnot, not even being able to get on the ice because of the weather. Yeah, well, the challenge we'll, we're going to find that out, but the concern is is more of the issue, and and you know there is a concern when you when you break rhythm. I mean, we've been in a pretty good rhythm and uh, focus. And yesterday, you we came to the building, and I told you guys we had uh, fifteen video edits we were going to show, but 
with the snow, with the potential postponement, with the waiting on the city, waiting on the league, there was no possible way I was going to run a meeting, a uh, formal meeting in there. The, the attention was, was diverted elsewhere. It was complete distraction um, of, of the unknown. And so we just held off all, all those meetings, uh, went on the ice, and uh, it almost did kind of a hybrid practice as if you were playing. Uh, but is in the event you didn't, you, we threw a couple extra drills in there that would be a little harder. Still not knowing whether we're playing the game or not and not knowing whether we can really push these guys like it's a practice day, which we could have used. So I wish the game was canceled earlier so we could have had a full, full blown practice, but you just have to adjust on the fly. It felt a lot like uh, the experiences through COVID. Drastically reduced chances against you, only one goal against in the last two games. What have you guys done that has helped improve on that? Uh, well, I mean, one of the things you saw that I did in the middle of the game or we did in the middle of the game the other day was, and the lines are going to be the same, is, you know, we shifted Zemgis, Akposo, and Robinson to three different lines. And just so we played more straight line um, hockey. I felt, you know, we, most of, most of our trouble, uh, and even if you look through the league, there's not a lot of system breakdowns as much as blunders, individual turnover, where you cannot possibly have get back to defense fast enough. Those are usually where goals are scored and where, where chances are scored for us. You know, um, we, we, uh, we're, like every team, you're working to limit those. Um, and I think our guys have, have done better in that regard. Again, when I make those line changes, it's so we play more direct. Uh, we're not trying to make a fancy play on entry. We're making sure the priority is get depth, get the puck to the net, keep the puck low. Uh, and I just felt, you know, um, when you have potentially three skilled guys, and in our event, three young skilled guys together, sometimes you get carried away and you're going to make more mistakes and give the other team more options. So we're trying to tweak things and shift things. You saw us shift Greenway to center. Uh, that's part of the part of the big picture. There's no probably not a coincidence that that's changed when we shifted uh, Greenway to a center position, and you have you know a third line center and a fourth line center in Krebs that have more specific roles, defined roles of defending first.